share the screen. All right, so welcome everybody. Uh, this is our third uh, journal club organized by the uh, uh, European Society of, of Congenital Heart Surgeon and the Italian Society of Cardiac Surgery. And recently, recently also the uh, British uh, Cardiothoracic Surgery Association joined the uh, uh, organization of this meeting in the figure of uh, Dr. Attilio Lotto. So this time, uh, we have Dr. Takashi Kido from the uh, Osaka University in Japan. So uh, Takashi is, first of all, uh, a very good friend of mine and a very nice person, very nice human being who trained in uh, Osaka in Japan and then moved to Boston for uh, a, a research fellowship where we uh, jointly work together uh, under uh, Dr. Del Nido's guidance. Uh, he later on moved to uh, Munich. So Takashi also learned how to speak in German and that's something <laughs> very uh, impressive and stayed in uh, at the uh, um, Munich Heart Center for almost uh, four years during both research and clinical uh, work. He is now back to uh, Japan and uh, back to Osaka University. He's an assistant professor there. And among his uh, numerous interests, he uh, focused recently his research on uh, the outcomes of uh, small uh, babies, small children on uh, uh, extracorporeal, paracorporeal uh, ventricular assist, uh, uh, assistance device. So today he is going to talk about outcomes in small children on Berlin Heart Expert support. And thank you again, Takashi. I will stop sharing and podium is yours. Yeah. Now, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can see your slides. Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you for introduction and thank you for inviting me. Yeah, I have learned a lot in Germany, so I'm very happy to attend this uh, EXA meeting. So for this meeting, I chose two articles about Berlin Heart X Core. And in the end of meeting, uh, I will share our institutional experience and a couple of research projects. The title of the first article is Outcomes in Small Children on Berlin Heart X Core Support. And this study focuses on the size of patients supported by Berlin Heart X Core. So uh, Berlin Heart X Core is a ventricular device, which is specifically designed for infants and children. The pumps are available in different sizes, and we can select them according to patient's body weight. This device was developed in Germany in 1990 and is currently used in more than 170 specialized centers around the world. For small patients, there are also implantable VADs, such as HVAD or heart mystery, and these VADs can be impl implanted usually in patients with body surface area uh, more than 0 0.9. Currently, we use heart mystery only for implantable VADs because of its lower rate of thromboembolic events. In a previous report from a European Mother Center study, uh, they reported uh, outcomes of ventricular device therapy for small patients. They included more than 350 patients under the age of 19 years, uh, supported by various type of ventricular device. Berlin Heart X score was used here in 51% of the patients. And you can see here kaplan meyer survival curve and the patients under the age of one year had the worst survival rate after body implantation. Because this study included patients with various type of device, a question arising from this study was, are small age and body surface area associated with poor outcomes of Berlin Heart X core implantation? From this background, the aim of the study of the first article was to identify 
influence of age and body surface area on outcomes after Berlin heart X core implantation. And cutoff values of age and body surface area, which provides best fitting results. And finally, outcomes according to the cutoff values were assessed. The study looked at the data of patients under the age of 19 years supported with Berlin Heart X score between 2000 and 2021. The data were from Euromax database and the cutoff values of age and body surface area were determined based on log rank test for uh, specific outcomes. And according to these cutoff values, the cohort was divided into three groups. There are three primary outcomes, death, heart transplantation, and explantation due to recovery. A total of 310 patients under the age of 19 years uh, underwent Berlin heart X core implantation during the study period. The uh, BSA data was missing in 16 patients, but among them, nine patients were either younger than six months or older than 10 years. So these nine patients were included because they can be categorized as high or low body surface area groups. Finally, 303 patients were included in this study. The cutoff value of age and BSA uh, were determined uh, based on log rank tests for uh, this transplantation and for explantation due to recovery. There was no significant cutoff value for this. For transplantation, the lowest p-values were obtained at the age of nine years and at the body surface area of 0 0.73 square meters. This means that older age and large BSA were associated with uh, frequent heart transplantation. And for explantation, the lowest p-values were obtained at the age of 1.3 years and body surface area of 0 0.53. This means that young age and uh, small body surface area uh, had more frequent uh, explantation due to recovery. And based on these cutoff values, the cohort was divided into three groups. Here, the first group of small patients included 151 patients. And here, the middle group, second group uh, included 54 patients. And the third group of large patients included 98 patients. The median age at implantation was two years in all patients, and the median body surface area was 0 0.5 in all patients. As for primary diagnosis, the percentage of congenital heart disease were higher in the first two groups. And in the large patients group, there are only 10% of patients who have congenital heart disease. And as for creatinine and albumin levels, these levels were higher in large patients group. And intermax classification, there was no significant difference between the three groups and 24% uh, of patients had were intermax profile one before implantation, which means cardiogenic shock. And 48% uh, of patients were intermax classification two, uh, which means progressive decline despite inotropic support. Small patients were more frequently intubated and smaller patients were had uh, more often previous cardiac surgery. As for type of support, biventricular acid device was more often used in large patients group and median time of support was around 100 days in all patients. The competing primary outcomes were shown in this slides for each body surface area group. 
and the rate of heart transplantation shown in red line here was higher in large patients group, which was around 62% at one year. In contrast, the rate of explantation rate due to recovery was higher in small patients group, which was around 20% at one year. Mortality rate was not significantly different between three groups and which was around 23% at one year. In univariable Cox regression models, age, body surface area, a diagnosis of non-congenital heart disease, previous cardiac surgery, and biventricular support, these factors were not associated with mortality. But for transplantation, older age and large BSA were associated with heart transplantation, and the diagnosis of non-congenital heart disease were also, was also associated with heart transplantation. On the other hand, previous cardiac surgery had negative impact on heart transplantation. And for recovery, smaller age and smaller BSA was, were associated with recovery, and biventricular support had negative impact on recovery. This slide shows the occurrence of early adverse events, which include cerebral vascular accident, pump thrombosis, major bleeding, and major infection. There was no significant difference between the three groups, but there were trends that small patients group had more often pump thrombosis and large patients group had more often major bleeding. So this present study uh, showed that age and body surface area were not associated with mortality. But the previous study from North American group reported that age at implantation was significant predictor for death on Berlin Heart X core support. This previous study included only 73 patients and their intermax profile was one or two in 97% and biventricular device was used in 42%. This means that the condition of patients before Berlin had implantation was very poor in this study group. And it can be said that uh, when the patient's condition were well managed before Berlin had implantation, then the age and body surface area are no longer associated with mortality. The, in the next article, we will uh, deeply see about myocardial recovery after ventricular device implantation. And this second article is a systematic review. The aim of this study is uh, to summarize current literature on the clinical course after bad explantation and two points of interest were the instance of recovery and the follow-up after explantation. The literature was searched using multiple databases and inclusion criteria were from 2012 to 2022, pediatric patients and durable ventricular acid device. From more than 4,000 articles, they included 18 articles for instance of recovery and 15 articles for follow-up after explantation. The incidence of recovery was examined uh, using uh, 928 patients. The etiologies were mostly cardiomyopathy. Berlin Heart X score was used in 724 patients. And among them, bridge to recovery was achieved in 75 patients, corresponding to 10%. And the follow-up after Berlin Heart X score explantation was determined using 72 patients, and a quarter of patients had myocarditis. Median age at implantation was 12 months, and duration of support was 100 days. 83% had good course after explantation, while 13% died, and 5% of patients needed re-implantation. 
the instant rate of recovery can be influenced by etiology. Myocarditis and post-cardiotomy failure are mostly transient types of diseases. So these diseases are more likely to have cardiac recovery. Miera and associates reported that myocarditis was associated with higher myocardial recovery with odds ratio of 17. And type of device can inf also influence the incident of recovery. The left ventricular unloading seems to be achieved uh, by parasitile flow elevated better than continuous flow. Kravash uh, reported that parasitile flow Elvad was three times more likely to have myocardial recovery than continuous flow device. And as we saw in the first article, young age and small BSA were also associated with myocardial recovery. Then finally, I will share our institutional experience. Since 2012, we have implanted Berlin Heart X score in a total of 34 patients. The median age was 16 months and the body weight was 7 kilo. 26 patients had dilated cardiomyopathy, 4 had restrictive cardiomyopathy, and 4 had congenital heart disease. The outcome was pretty good. Heart transplantation was achieved in 15 patients after the median support time of 431 days. 13 patients had explantation due to recovery after median support time of 164 days. And notably, all of these patients were dilated cardiomyopathy. Two patients died because of neurological complication in one and systemic metabolic abnormality in one. Four patients are ongoing, still waiting for donor organ. And this is one case of myocardial recovery in our center. This was a two years old girl with dilated cardiomyopathy. She was transferred to our center under inotropic support with medical jet. And before implantation, a cardiogram showed severely dilated left ventricle and reduced contraction function. And we performed emergently body implantation for this patient. Six months after the implantation, the cardiac function improved and left ventricle became smaller. And we decided that explantation at eight months after the implantation. Now the patient is eight years old. She is doing well with only with oral medication and the recent cardiac function, a cardiogram showed acceptable cardiac function. This is our research published in European Journal in 2020. Uh, we looked at the histology of myocardial, myocardial left ventricular myocardium obtained that Berlin had extra implantation. Those who had explantation due to recovery showed significantly low degree of myocardial fibrosis and higher capillary vascular density. So the histology of myocardial tissue obtained that ventric Berlin had extra implantation are the significant predictors for myocardial recovery. And in another study from our center, uh, we looked at uh, histology of left ventricular myocardium deeply using uh, phosphorylated A2A uh, histone variant, which is a marker of DNA damage. You can see here a small red spot indicating by a uh, wh white triangle. Uh, this red spot is indicating uh, presence of phosphorylated A2A histone variant. And the percentage of these marker positive cells uh, were significant predictor for uh, myocardial recovery. So fewer percentage of these marker positive myocardial cells 
uh, were significantly associated with myocardial recovery. Um, currently, uh, multiple research projects are ongoing at our center, and these results were, will be shared as soon as possible. And I hope we can collaborate to further improve the outcomes of children with severe heart failure. Thank you for your attention, and I I'm happy to accept interesting questions. Thank you very much, Takashi. Thank you very much. Well, uh, uh, I can start with uh, a, a question and uh, a comment. Well, actually, um, the, the, the question is about your coagulation strategies uh, in uh, uh, after bearing heart implantation, Yuzubival or Aprin, or and when you're gonna start the antiplatelets in which postoperative day? This is the uh, question. Well, go ahead, please. Mm, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, anticoagulation is a very important issue after building heart score implantation. And in our center, uh, at first intravenous heparin uh, in within 24 hours after building heart implantation in the intensive care unit. And this heparin infusion was controlled to adjust the partial thromboplastin time around 60 seconds, around 60 seconds. And once the patient started oral feeding, uh, we start the uh, anti-thrombotic medication using acetyl ASA and uh, dipiridamol. And the chronic anticoagulation was uh, started using warfarin, like after five days, five days after building heart score implantation. And we keep the international normalized ratio around three. Okay, so the comment, uh, well, uh, data from the Italian registry that are not published yet, considering patient below five kilograms of body weight, um, we show a percentage of myocardial recovery that is 2.7%, actually, on 37 patients who were implanted below 5 kilograms of body weight, almost half were transplanted, 35% uh, 30 died, and just one patient recovered, you know, had the recovery of the myocardium and that the, the marine heart were explanted. Uh, since uh, you demonstrated uh, very nice histological parameters and data about the patient who recover, a patient who did not recover, I don't know if you can correlate MRI data to establish establish which is the best patient who can be candidate to recovery. Yeah, thanks. Uh, it, it is very interesting if we can uh, do a uh... MRI before building heart screen implantation. If we can do it, we can co co we can compare the the results of MRI and myocardial histology. But most of our patients are in very very severe condition before building heart screen implantation. Sometimes they have already uh, mechanical circuit support, so mm. it would be not possible to perform MRI before building heart implant very hard implantation in most of the patient but sometimes we have stable patients so we would like to go through MRI study as well for these patients yeah sometimes uh, we we perform another in another disease like tetrajo follow or rate after front operation we we use MRI for uh to determine myocardial uh, fibrosis so we can use this uh, MRI technique for also in heart failure patients. Thank you very much. Well, I saw that uh, uh, there are colleagues from uh, the Hospital of Munich, maybe Professor Horer or Professor Ono are with mm -hmm. us in the, in the audience. I don't know if, since they are very, very expert in this uh, <laughs> type of, you know, <laughs> uh, surgery, I don't know if they can comment on that. <laughs> I have activated the, uh, the uh, audio of Professor Ono, if he wants to 
we comment. But um, so Takashi, in the meantime, uh, uh, maybe so there is someone else that wants to talk uh, or they can uh, write in the chat. But yeah, so Dr. Ono is is here. So he can talk. You can talk, Dr. Ono, if you want. Yeah. Uh, can, I, can I talk to you? Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, Dr. Kido Oda Takashi, uh, you have done a very nice presentation of the over, <coughs> overview of the very heart implantation and its uh, result after um, the, uh, after um, we have already uh, about, about the two and a half years together. Um, 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 Actually, um, the very heart implantation and heart transplantation in Munich is uh, performed in the uh, uh, University of Munich and not in the uh, German Heart Center. So we know the data, but not clinically uh, directly uh, um, on the patient. But we know that the very heart is very good for the young, or especially small uh, infant or the children. Uh, is a good uh, uh, result without uh, major complications. We also uh, make seven heart transplantation after um, bearing heart implantation, bearing heart uh, extra implantation, and uh, uh, all of the uh, transplanted patients are very good uh, relative uh, uh, lung uh, uh, size. No? Uh, I totally agree with your address and your opinion. So um, I'm very happy you uh, have uh, such a great chance in a uh, nice presentation. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much for your comment, Dr. Ono. I'm very happy to connect with you in this meeting. <laughs> uh, so can I ask you something, Takashi or uh, mm. Dr. Ono? Uh, so what is the absolute contraindication for you in, in case uh, you need to implant uh, an extracorporeal or paracorporeal device. So, because like in Padua, we tend to uh, implant first the cannula of the Berlin art and connect the baby on a uh, like Levitronic or centrifugal pump. And then we switch to a Berlin art after a few days. So this is our strategy recently, but I'm just curious in Munich and in Osaka, what is the absolute contraindication? Because it used to be five kilos in, in, in Padua, but not anymore because we, we have implanted some uh, devices in smaller babies. Uh, but I'm just curious of what, like one, you know, two big institutions like yours. Well, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Actually, we have no contraindication uh, in, in body weight. We use very hard X core in even in patient under the body weight of three kilo. But our indication for belly heart is very, very hard because in Japan, it is only allowed when patients registered the list of heart transplantation. So at first they need cardiac catheterization for determine the indication of heart transplantation. And during this period, they cannot uh, undergo heart, Berlin heart score implantation. So we need to perform at first centrifugal pump as, as you mentioned. And during this period, we have, many, we have lost many patients because of neurologic complications. Once they have brain hemorrhage or something, and they are not listed for heart, heart, transplant, heart transplantation, then we cannot perform Berlin heart score implantation. Okay. I think, I think in Munich is also already also the same as uh, Osaka or Japan. Additionally, we discuss about the patient with uh, single ventricle palliation, such as after the node procedure or after the uh, bidirectional uh, curve pulmonary shunt, uh, which are the worst ventricular function. Actually, we have very very uh, low number of uh, the um, donation of small children. So that's, it is a relative contraindication for our clinic or in Munich because um, the, uh, the result after uh, such in such cohort is, uh, I think, uh, not uh, uh, transplantable. 
after the X core implantation. So um, we discuss always on such patients for the indication or the contraindication for very uh, hard, uh, very hard. Yeah, I agree with that. So the diagnosis is very important. The so dilated carbon biopsy is the best indication for building heart in extra implantation, but as Dr. Ono said, the congenital heart disease, so heart failure after the surgical palliation for congenital heart disease is very hard to manage with building heart X core implant, with building heart X core. But I think the indication is expanding. We have already four patients with congenital heart disease, and those patients were well managed. So I think uh, the indication will be expanding. So on this regard, there is a question from Dr. Garufi uh, from the audience, uh, like regarding which are the most frequent uh, congenital heart disease that led to recovery. Because you said that mm -hmm. uh, in the group without a congenital heart disease, you have a higher recovery. But in the congenital heart disease group, uh, so which was the congenital heart disease that was leading uh, the patients to a higher degree of uh, bridge to recovery? Yeah, thank you for asking. So there's various types of congenital heart disease. So I would say like it is very hard to have myocardial recovery in patients with fontan failure but we can have myocardial recovery in patients with post-cardiotomy shock, just like acute heart failure after specific heart surgery after congenital heart, for congenital heart disease. Okay, I think, that's... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, our experiment is um, anomalous origin of uh, left coronary artery from pulmonary artery, uh, artery or the ARCAPA, no? And such patients uh, may be a good indication for the very heart support or some uh, coronary problem after the cardio <coughs> for me. It's a, a very nice chance to recover, I think, with a uh, very heart uh, support. But uh, single ventricle palliation uh, with uh, no hemodynamic or the, uh, uh, the green hemodynamic it is a little bit difficult to manage a problem after the implantation, I think. <clears throat> yeah, that's uh, right. <laughs> maybe there is also Dr. Marchetto that wants to, con to comment. Just a second. Let me, let me see if I can uh, activate this audio. Or well, maybe not. OK, I think we can uh, maybe close. Uh, this very interesting journal club. And uh, maybe Dr. Vida wants to comment on the Bologna meeting. So thank you again, Takashi. And thanks, thank Dr. You. Ono. Thank you very much. We thank you very much. You. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Takashi, for you know, your participation. And uh, well, to your well-known center, Osaka, it was really a pleasure to have you presenting all these data. And we hope that we're going to have future cooperation between our centers in order to produce you know, scientific works. And actually, I can conclude, and I'll visit here with the slide. Um, we, we can start promoting uh, one meeting that uh, next year will take place in uh, Bologna, Italy. This is gonna be the first uh, World Summit on Pediatric and Congenital Heart Disease. There are gonna be three hosting societies, the CHSS, North American Society, the European Society EXA and uh, the World Society for Pediatric and Congenital Heart Surgery. Then we're gonna add also to Cardiology Society, the Italian Society and the European Society of Pediatric Cardiology. And we have also a few satellite surgical societies participating to our meeting, starting from the Latin American Society, the African Society, the Asian Association, and hopefully the Japanese Association of Cardiothoracic Surgery. And uh, the main subject of this meeting is going to be the fate of the atrioventricular valves starting from fetus and going into adulthood. So we're going to promote even more this uh, uh, conference during the next uh, uh, our appointments. And the next appointment, Elvisa, we're going to have an international lecture 
which will held on December. So, yeah, no, no. This uh, the next is on uh, November twenty four, and uh, Doctor Ignacio Barra from the Hospital Carajan of Buenos Aires, Argentina, will talk about a three D printed molded patch uh, that he designed for uh, pre operative planning. Uh, so it will be a very interesting topic. Okay, great. So thanks everybody to the audience for participating to this meeting and see you during our next appointment. Thanks so much to everybody and have a nice day. Bye, Takashi. Bye. 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 Uh, see thanks. you later. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye.